Sanders. It's not because he's so appealing. It's because she is so unappealing. Write that one down. So you see how I neatly tied the story of the Madoff thing, the trailer for the big short to Clinton and brought it down to the news? You see how it all works when a show works well? You tie it all together. And that's why it takes thought. That's why the show's motto is talk radio for the thinking person because you actually have to have listened from the beginning to here to get to Clinton. I could just play the soundbite and say, isn't she terrible? It would have very little impact on you. But when you see its connection to the housing bubble, the Madoff scandal, and understand she's part and parcel of that same exact construct, then you understand what I'm saying. See? Okay. So now we can move on by taking an additional call or two when I come back and moving on to other topics. And believe me, I have stuff from the news that I have to get to. It's like 10 pages of great sound. Obama saying Islam is rooted in a commitment to compassion, mercy, justice, and charity. Really. And you know, all of us g gag on statements like this in a time when we see Muslims cutting off heads, raping and killing their way across the Middle East, and we, we beg the question, Mr. Obama, why must you sell us on Islam if it's such a peaceful religion? And if it's such a loving religion, why do you have to sell it so hard? I haven't heard any other president sell Christianity of you. Have you heard a president get up and say that Christianity is such a great religion and here's why I'm here? No. Why is he selling it so hard if it's exactly what he says it is? That's number one. Then we get off him and we move to Mark Cuban. Says he's open to all GOP candidates except Ted Cruz. That's an important sound bite. Bite. Sound bite. Then we have Jeb Bush to an audience. He finishes his speech and says, please clap. It's beyond belief to watch the end of the... Uh, uh, the Bush dynasty come to an end, crashing down around his uh, loafers. I'll be back. That's how I feel every day listening to this. I feel like I'm brain dead from it. If I'm feeling brain dead from this campaign, you must be brain dead. That's all I can tell you. I don't know how anyone can listen to it. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm groping here. That's why I said I'll take a day off. And I'll just think about something else because I've had enough of this. The endless campaign. You know, it goes back to bread and roses. That's what it really is. Deluding you with this endless campaign. When those who devise bespoke tranche opportunities actually have picked the winner already. I can guarantee you, no matter what you think, those who devise BTOs have already picked the winner. Whether you know it or not. You can get all excited if you want. So, I'm a cynic when it comes down to it. Choose one from column A, if you wish, a commie or a criminal tonight in New Hampshire, the land of the free and the home of the live free and get high uh, state. Or you can go to the other side. You have a choice between a showman, a shaman, and a shanda. I'll take the showman. At least it'll be entertaining. That's all. I mean, let's, you want to break it down to sarcasm and cynicism? Go ahead. I, I don't want to watch, watch the shaman or the shanda for 10 seconds. The showman I could take. Let's see if he follows through. And if you're really uh, given towards literary criticism, you could say it's much ado about nothing, or The Sound and the Fury, if you read that, or Obama on the mosque visit. As I said to you on the mosque visit, what was he selling it so hard? If Islam is the religion of peace and all that he says it is, what do you have to sell it so hard? Secondly, it's an embarrassment for a president to be pushing a religion like this. Who ever heard of a president selling a religion like he sells uh, Islam? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Do, du hast, du hast mich. Du, du hast. Uh, for those of you who just joined the show, um, 
you'll hear almost nothing about the uh, presidential uh, uh, race today because I'm bored of it. And I have good instincts about radio or I wouldn't have lasted these years. If I am bored of it, you are bored of it. I'll tell you right now. It's that simple. How can you spend every minute, every waking minute, dis dissecting every verb, every verb, every word? This one said that, and that one said this, and he's ahead, and he's behind, and he's up, and he's down. I'm not going to do it. Good luck to you if you like it. I'm talking about the housing crisis of 08 that gave us Obama. Actually, the real estate collapse of 07, which began earlier than that, from the, the gangsters who were running the, uh, the credit default swaps and have now re invented a new instrument to, to reboot the CDO machine, and they're selling them again. And uh, it's happening again. <laughs> the same banks are involved. And by the way, many of the candidates, especially Hillary Clinton, is up to her, uh, what shall I say, on a family show, eyeballs. For her, that's particularly apt. She's beyond her eyeball. She's underwater with this, the, the kind of money she's taken from these investment banks. So that's why the nut, the commie, is moving ahead because she's so, I mean, she's so basically involved with this that they're going for the commie. He screams like he's not. Okay, yeah, go look into his background before you get so excited about the great socialist burning. And now I want to talk about Madoff, and I asked a simple question because I think it makes for good radio. Were you robbed by Madoff? Why is Ruth Madoff shielded? Why is she enjoying a $2.5 million windfall of stolen money? Who said she should get $2.5 million? How did this guy Picard take a billion dollars in uh, fees? That's the guy who's supposed to be uh, dividing up what's left and find out where. A billion dollars in legal fees, you hear this? And he gave her $2.5 million like it's nothing. So she lives in a rented condo in Connecticut, and she drives a Toyota Prius, and she actually shops. You hear this? Really, that's really a stress. I mean, she enjoyed the limos pretty good and the penthouse, and she enjoyed all the perks of the, of the stolen money. Why does American law say that if a wife is involved, like you, you, how many times in The Sopranos? Remember the, the show The Sopranos? <clears throat> when Tony would come home and the wife would ask him about something, he would say, I can't tell you, and go, shh. Because if she didn't know about it, she couldn't be indicted. That's an interesting law, since she's living off the proceeds of crime, right? That's what we all said. What a, what a country. Oh, the, the poor, the gentler sex. Yeah, right. Well, where, where did that law come from, that a wife is shielded from the, the, the crimes of the husband? I mean, I could see it if she really didn't know, but she was enjoying the, bound, the, 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 uh, the perks of the bounty, right? All right, let's go down to the callers. Har Harvey on WABC has an interesting story to tell. Harvey, go ahead. What's your story? My best friend's uh, in-laws uh, had a small clothing manufacturer. He made sweatshirts, sweatpants, down in Brownsville, down in Brooklyn, down around there. And during the late 60s, they hit it big when sweatshirts took off. They knew Madoff through other people, through other people. They invested, invested, invested with him. As it turned out, business boomed, Madoff crashed. These people lived nicely, $33 million gone, gone. They now live okay, but wait. Okay, they they invested with him, thinking they were going to make these fabulous twenty five percent returns. What happened? Did they get any money back? They're still waiting. They're living in a three room apartment on Nostrand Avenue in uh, what you call it, down at Sheepshead Bay right now. Being oh, really? So they actually fell? They actually didn't pop back? They, they they're still waiting for Picard to give them money back because they didn't take anything out. But since they were close friends, they said they should have known what was going on. So Harvey. This is an offbeat show, is it not, in the midst of this political frenzy? Do you find this interesting? What, the show or the frenzy? No, my show. Do you find it interesting in the midst of a political season? Yeah, it's a, it's relief. Yeah, you know, really? You see? It's, it's a relief to me, too. I've had enough of it. How long can an election go on? Uh, uh, four years. <laughs> Soon well, I've had, enough of, I've had enough of it. You know, get back to me at another point, another juncture. I've had enough of this. So I figured so have you. Did you see the Madoff last night on the Madoff um, miniseries on, on on ABC? Yes. Yes? Yes, I watched it. Did you enjoy it? Uh, yeah, but they I don't think it was <clears throat> truthful, okay? They hit the high point points, but they didn't put the low points in about him out there scamming everybody, just scamming, 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 scamming. And w what did you think of Richard Dryface playing Madoff? I don't like the guy. I don't like uh, the actor. Never did. No, I see. I don't like the actor either. But don't you think he played that inveigling con man very well? Uh, 
they, I don't know, they got a movie coming out on HBO with De Niro playing made up. Yeah, right. And I hear the De Niro version is much better. I think it'll be better. Oh, De Niro's a better, De Niro's a, a classic, a great actor compared to uh, to Dry Face. But nevertheless, from an American point of view, the biggest Ponzi scheme in history is, is certainly worth talking about, isn't it? Without a doubt. It's like, you know, All right. Well, every- thank you for listening. So I mean to keep you uh, entertained on the Savage Nation. And that's where we're doing this. And there's so much more I'm going to do on other stuff. Uh, and uh, I, I don't want to give you a summary job. I'm uh, not going to give you a summation because the calls are, are slam, slammed in here. Everyone wants to talk about this. Let's go to WABC. John, in New York City, on WABC, go ahead, please, on the Madoff uh, Ponzi scheme. What happened to you? I So far, I haven't received anything back. I am out about almost $18 million, Woo. and I never took a nickel out. We lived on minimal amounts of money, so we just kept putting it in, putting it in, so that I would have something to leave children and something like that, and you know, stuff like that. And a friend of mine who so- works with Stanford Bernstein said to me in, the, in like the early 2000s, something's not kosher here, John. He said to me, how, he said, Jesus Christ came in the sky, I couldn't get you more than that. How is he getting you, how is he getting you 18 at that time? I, so I, this was, this was your life savings from your, your lifetime of toil, the 18 mil, right? 35 years of work. And I, I called Madoff and he gets on the phone. And he yelled at you like you're, in, like you're a piece of garbage. Oh, that he played, he played the aggressor. When you ask where the money was, like, how dare you even ask me? He said to me, do you think that, I'm not going to say the word, that I urinate that amount away on the weekend, that this money that you have in that account. Oh, my God. So he put down $18 million like it was nothing to humiliate you? Right. And his wife, I knew them personally because we had a house in Long Island. The other, She knew all about it right from the beginning because she didn't say to me all the time, we have a house in, in New Jersey also. You don't have any mortgages on the house here or the house at the beach. Why don't you take equity loans out and put the money in them? Oh, my God. It's just what I thought. So she was a co-conspirator, in your opinion. Very charming. And she and I said, you know what? I'm 60-something years old. I don't feel like having mortgages at this, in my life at this age. Now I'm and she was and she wanted you to take a mortgage out so he could then, what, take the money and put it in his fund? Right. Oh, my God. This is a great story, John. So, in, in essence, you know, what, what we're on to here is because I'm a little offended that the missus gets to get two and a half million dollars from the lawyer, Picard, and not go to jail. I mean, I think that she's involved with it. I thought she was involved with it. That was my suspicion. Now, here's a caller saying he knows for a fact that she was trying to con him. Is there a prosecutor listening to this show? Do you think they care about this case anymore? He used to call, he calls me or my people that are in my rank there, the, the, the crawlers. We're the last ones to get anything back. You know, that, who? that type. Who, the lawyer Picard said you're a crawler? We're the la- yeah, we're the crawlers because we didn't take anything back. I have friends who did take out, who purchased, you know, real estate for their children and stuff like that. They had to give it. They lost everything. I luckily... Didn't have any more. Well, explain to the average Joe listening to the show what you just said. People who invested with Madoff, who got profits and then invested the profits, they had to give back those profits to the 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 lawyer collecting for everyone who was scammed, right? Right. My friend right, right. now is being sued. I think she has to give them back. I don't know, two or three million dollars. She had a townhouse on on Eleventh Street, you know, for a million years which they lost, and, and they lost everything. They're living, they're living in a little three-bedroom apartment. I mean, it's not so little, but it's, you know, compared no, to... No, this is an amazing story to me, because I didn't know the details of this. People don't know that not only were lives ruined, but that how, how people are living, they think that it's all over. It's not all over. You're still living, but you now here's the thing. The average person listening to this says, I have no sympathy for John on WABC. I don't have $18 million. It's as though you stole the money and invested. Or they'll say things like, well, he took a chance and he lost. That's his problem. That's what they're going to say, John. How would you answer them? And I've heard of that already. I've heard that from friends of mine. That How could you put almost everything you had all with this one person? Because my father-in-law had it 
for 35 years. 